Now we're recording. Hold on. Hey, Brandy. Hey. Welcome to The Scoop, Weddings Unveiled. With your hosts, Tim Schaus of TLS Entertainment and Brandy Harlan, a local wedding planner, bringing you tips, tricks, and ideas to help plan your wedding day. This is The Scoop, Weddings Unveiled. Uh, welcome back to another episode of The Scoop, Weddings Unveiled. I am Tim Schaus, your premier wedding DJ. Alongside Brandy Harlan, <laughs> your non-retired wedding planner, and you actually get to see the video this time. You I get to see it. You yeah. don't actually get I don't to see. I never get to, to to see it this way. Yeah, but I need you to do this. this. There we go. Yeah. Now we can hear you. Then I like. It's fine. It's so. so it's much. fine. It's, it's fine. fine. It's fine. That's our theme today. It's fine. <laughs> Everything's fine. Everything's fine. What's been going on? It's been a couple of weeks since we've been on. Oh my on. gosh! Yeah. Um, and it's like it, we are out of wedding season. Yes. Um, and it's very, 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 very hot yes. in uh, in Sarasota, in the Florida area. And like no rain. Like well, it we rained had, a little bit today. It, we had some, it was supposed to rain a lot this week. Um, well, my grass looks like burnt toast at work. <laughs> send it into the news station. They're actually asking for people to send in their burnt toast, toast grass. Oh, it's so bad. Like our horses are struggling to have things to eat. Oh, boy. It's bad. It's so bad. Send um, us rain, y'all. Yeah, Somebody this rain. Do a rain dance. However, um, and actually this is something that we can actually talk about yeah. uh, today is, well, having a rain plan. Uh-huh. Um, I actually have a wedding this Friday at the Don Cesar. Uh, Outside? Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. Are they not from here? They are not. Oh, that always is the answer. They are not from here. Never from here when they have a wedding in the middle of June. No. Um, and oh. the ceremony will be outside. Oh, God. Near the it's not, luckily, it's not on the beach, but we're like right in the water. Uh, Jonathan Pajak and his beautiful wife, Maria, were at the Don Cesar this past weekend. Okay. And he told me it just, it was the worst. It was so hot. They were oh. beat. It was... I mean, just and just so you know, people, just because you're near the water doesn't mean it's cooler. It's <laughs> true. That is like <laughs> water is it does not equal way. cooler. There we go. It equals hotter. Um, <laughs> there's no breeze, like right, like it's there's not enough breeze to counter. Like I was at um, Sun Outdoors yesterday with the boys. Okay. And just to walk from. The covered area to our covered area, you had to run across the ground. It was hot. It was so hot. And I got burnt. But You got I, burnt? Uh, yep. Oh, I can see it. <laughs> <laughs> Black people burn. <laughs> He's oh, like, boy. oh, yeah, you're lighter. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> but, yeah, it is, it's not the time to have a wedding. No, and, I mean, and we'll that's do why, it, but. Yeah, that's why you don't see a ton of us um, – you know, a ton of weddings here during the summer. It is, no. you know, and, and you wonder why, like, a lot of people are like, oh, that sounds so weird that, like, the summertime is not wedding season, that you guys are out of wedding season, and everybody else in the nation, in the U.S., this is wedding season for them, especially yes. in the Northeast. Um, it's I'm just... seeing a lot of people going to weddings in the North. Yeah. Yeah, Michigan, Ohio, a lot of people having weddings. Jersey, Philly, there. like, every, it's, it is yeah. D.C. Um, we're actually getting, finally getting some leads up there for Carlos and myself, but... Uh, it is just, it is too damn hot. It's too humid. Um, your makeup for ladies, your makeup will literally melt off. Yep. Um, I don't know this. Five seconds but in the sun and you're done. Yeah, you're done. Yeah. Walking to like my car twice today, I'm like, I'm done. Like it's already melted. <laughs> it's gone. It's um, gone. So yeah. So uh, do you have any weddings, anything wedding related uh, coming up this summer or is it you guys um, are pretty much just chill and... We have some nonprofit retreats happening, but no weddings. Nothing wedding related. Um, we have a anniversary party. We had a retirement party um, last week, two weeks ago, and it was really cool because the guy that retired worked in the five bureau boroughs of New York, and so oh, okay. uh, he was in charge of recreating and and he was like the main construction guy that was in charge of the Freedom Tower. And um, he got to sign and put a note on the last beam that went up for a family who had lost a friend of theirs um, and who was never recovered from 9-11. And so he wrote a message on the final beam from the family. And so it's at the very, they call it topping off. Um, so it's the last beam that went up top. 
Okay. That was nice. Big, yeah. Big um, celebration. So it was really kind of cool. We were we story. provided entertainment for that one. Yes, yeah, you did. DJ Terry. Yeah, he was there. He was yes. tearing it up. He was tearing. Terry, Terry was tearing was it up. Tearing it up. Um, but yeah, so that's all we've kind of had, really. I did book a wedding for March of this uh, coming year, this past weekend. So yeah. Okay. Yay. Yay. That's exciting. Yeah. It's good. And then, so yeah, really, the only other it. the only other thing that we're planning on is uh, TLS Entertainment's yes. ten year anniversary party, coming up August 9th. I got my invite. I RSVP'd at like midnight too. As soon as it came through. Hey, let's go. I was like, and I have some things that I need to go over with you on that. Yes. Sir. So. Yeah. On that. <laughs> on that. On that note. <laughs> on that note. Um, we are. We actually have a very uh fun uh, podcast today. Yeah. Um, something that we've been. You know, working on actually uh, getting somebody on, and we are going to because I have so we have so many questions. Yes. Um, and we are uh, we are, you know, honored to have Ann Capuza, uh, who is the founder and attorney of Powerhouse Legal Strategy. So, Ann, welcome. Let me see if we can hear you. Thanks for having me. Yay! We can Yay. hear you. Yay! Technology's awesome. working. We love it. We love it. So yes, Ann Capuza, uh, founder and attorney with Powerhouse Legal Strategy. Kind of tell us a little bit. I know you are. You had mentioned that um, you are, you know, spe you specialize in the wedding industry as far as the legal side is concerned for contracts and so forth. So kind of tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah. Um, so I started working with creatives and online entrepreneurs, um, and then I had like a few wedding industry clients, and I I was reviewing their contracts, and I noticed that the contract for kind of off um and so that got me interested in being like oh like what does this industry look like and why are the contracts kind of off because like, you know like people are booking weddings that are like vendors are booking weddings that are like thousands of dollars and there's a lot oh no a lot of pressure writing on like one or one or but weren't so i saw an opportunity to fill the gap in helping wedding professionals understand what should what their contract should be look like Okay, awesome. That's super helpful too. Yeah, and we have. Um, I know we always have, uh, at least in the on the entertainment side, the industry. I know we have a ton of, um, you know, we we should always you should always have contracts. Yeah. Uh, because it, it not only helps uh, keep your business safe, but it also keeps the client safe. And um, you know, kind of you know, lead us. What does that look like? Um, do you do you help out with that as well? Um, you know, for, for businesses, what, you know, is that what you do as far as like creating those contracts? Yeah. Primarily what I do is I review and update uh, contracts for wedding professionals. And I have a template shop online called the business reserve where I have uh, contract templates that wedding professionals can buy if they don't want a custom contract. So when it comes to the buzzword, I know this is always a topic, um, retainer versus deposit. Ooh, that's a good one. I always get asked and I have since changed everything that I do to retainer. However, um, explaining it to someone else, such as, you know, my leadership or other people, what's the difference and why should you use retainer versus deposit and they're non-refundable? How does that work? Yeah. Yeah, really great question. Um, the reason is because courts want to see, like, when, when someone pays you, like, what exactly did they pay you for? Like, what are they getting in exchange for them paying you? Um, and so it's hard because you're like, deposit, okay, yeah, but like, what are they pay? What, what are you doing for to earn that deposit? Yeah. Like, what yeah. exactly is that deposit for? Um, but retainer implies that they're paying that, that retainer fee because you are retaining, like, your them for a weekend or something you're you're booking it off your calendar for retainer gotcha. um and so that's why like that term specifically implies exactly what the payment is for and so courts prefer things like that where it's clear exactly what are they paying you for rather than um you know the vendor designing a contract that is like gives them a non-refundable fee for no reason that the client does not know enough or to have an attorney on their side it's like an unfair advantage that the client can't doesn't contest because they don't know any better so retainer okay. sounds a lot better but i'll do you one better like i think you should make it more explicit and call it like a reservation fee 
or a like a something like that to make it even more clear about exactly what is this fee for. Oh, gotcha. reservation so fee. Should you define what it is for as well? Because you mm -hmm. know, there's a lot of like time that goes into getting the lead, booking the lead, working with them, getting, um, working through all those emails back and forth, scheduling them for a tour, doing the tour, doing the paperwork for the proposal, taking their payment. There's a lot that goes into that. So should you give a descriptor of what that includes? Like your retainer yeah. um, saves your date with us for services rendered at our property, for instance, because I have a venue. Um, and it also covers all administrative costs like should it be that detailed yeah i definitely i have it in the, the contracts in my store that's what i say i say that this okay. fee is is for, it, i essentially say this fee covers um, us blocking off our, our calendar for this date and it's the opportunity cost of any missed weddings that we can't do in the event that it doesn't this wedding doesn't proceed for whatever reason so i make okay. it explicit um and i recommend other people do too oh. I like that. Let me change in some contracts. <laughs> right, yeah. And that and that's not in can you make it as non refundable? Like is that Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because ours are all because it, the, Yeah, and so that's sort of the point, right? Like you don't have to do anything else. Like that's why it's non refundable because the thing that they're paying you for is that you're reserving that time on your calendar. That's what action. that fee is. Yeah. You've already completed the action, and that's why it's non-refundable because you already did, did it. Like once they pay you, like and you reserve that time, the act is already over. Like you already earned that p portion and, of the contract. And then the rest of the funds that are due are towards the use of the services that are rendered the day of the actual event. Yes, and you know I recommend people break it up into sort of three payments, um, but you don't have to. Use... Would you look at that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it, but you can do you can I recommend three payments, but you can do two if that's better. Um, just because it like when a court looks at it, if someone's ever going to be like, oh, this is completely unfair. But when a court looks at it, and they're like, okay, there are three payments, and these are sort of like they cover milestones. Um, so that's why I would do that versus two payments, like one, um, you know, one at the beginning and then one at the end. Not to mention that we live in sort of a subscription economy, and people are used to frequent lower payments. Um, and so the more you can make it align with what people expect, the less they're going to protest. Yeah, because we have a payment that's due, which is the, the deposit or the retainer. Um, or the and res then reservation, reservation fee. fee. I, like that. Um, I do like that. And then a second payment that's due like 60 days after that first initial payment. So again, do you descriptor underneath like what that payment's for? It's rendering... Um, any services that have been like communic what if they haven't communicated what if you haven't exchanged any emails do you do a descriptor for that one or that is defined as part of the reservation towards the day of um cost or continuing to hold you know payment? it's the more you can tie a payment to specific milestones that you're completing for the client the better so if you were like this is for us to do the first phase of prep or something like that, like any way you would define it, the better. I, and I'm all saying all this, like in the event that you ever have to go to court and there's an issue about this or a client complains, like that this is an unfair contract. These are all ways to like back it up. Um, and a contract is like, basically it's like wearing a seatbelt. I hope you never need it, but you know, I hope that if you do, it's a strong one. Um, and that's, that's why it's like, it's easier to, if you justify, hey, this payment, second payment is for the prep work we've done to get to this point since you're, since you paid your uh, reservation fee. And then the final payment is for like the, the final phase of prep. Have you ever had to go to court for anything like this, like wedding related? Um, yeah. No, I haven't gone to court for anything wedding related, um, but I have gone to court before. Okay. Well. Okay. <laughs> we hope so. <laughs> <laughs> so has anyone had to uh, use your contract and have any kind of mediation or negotiation rather than it actually making it all the way to court? And then it was saved because of the defining factors you have in the contracts that you help professionals with? Um, I haven't had any any of those types of situations. I mean, ideally, none of that would even arise because my contracts yeah. are designed to be 
clear and comprehensive so that like there aren't future disputes about things. So I I should hope they haven't had to been used in that kind of Major situation, but really you know. Job. I mean, I don't know about that. Like, I think so much of life's luck, um, but I think a part of it is I have yet to see the, that kind of situation. Yeah. So uh, when it comes to this, let's let's. I know we got right into the heavy, but tell us a little bit about like your background and how you got to be here, just outside of just doing the content and things. Like, where are you from, and are you in Florida? Like, how how did all this? end up here like did you always want to be an attorney and was that like a lifelong uh no so i'm from sarasota actually like i okay. grew up there um and then I, I went to school in dc in california and i've been living in california for the past 10 ish years a little over 10 years um so yeah it's and then i in terms of wanting always wanting to be an attorney i was always told that i would be a good attorney i'm pretty sure that was not a compliment um <laughs> and so it yeah, I just, I sort of went on this path that I was told to do. I love that. And so now you're in California, but they, um, anyone in the industry can get your services either online or work with you no matter what, because remote is like the way to go now. Yeah. Yeah. It's mostly because, um, there's, you know, usually lawyers only practice in the area where they, where they are barred. Um, but if your practice is related to, to if you can work with people in other states if your practice is related to if they if that practice is related to what you do in your state so that's why people can work with me that's awesome are there any like crazy stories of what people have had to put in contracts in any of the uh, industry anything like i don't know don't ride the horses would probably be something i would have to put in my contract <laughs> we have horses on um, property <laughs> so i just heard i just heard of like a story about like a photographer whose uh, equipment was damaged because I guess the DJ used lasers and those lasers damaged the photography equipment. Um, so now that's like something I added to my photography so, contract template. Right, how, does like, that, how would that work then? Because the contract's like not the with. contract's not with the DJ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it says in there that like the, you know, if, if for some reason their equipment gets damaged by it, by another vendor or because of the party like the groom like the someone in their wedding party because you know imagine like someone could take a drink and pour it all over the camera sure. like that could equally happen right yeah. that the couple is liable for paying back the photographer for whatever damage equipment oh. from the actual event yeah so. because you're like hey i'm covered while i'm here if anything happens while i'm at your event you're responsible wow and what's the minimum as far as like um, in the contracts, I know in ours, we have them take out a certificate of liability and it's a million dollar policy. What parameters do you have set around that? Or do you, can you speak to that a little bit? Is that something that you kind of dive into a little bit as far as the minimums that people should have depending on their industry? So who, so actually I haven't heard about this. Who, who do you put that certificate? Who, who do you require to so have the certificate liability? We require that from our clients to carry that CLI oh, wow. and we pull it for them in their name to protect them against anything, you know, Grandma Joe was, you know, dancing on the dance floor and slipped and broke an ankle. Um, sure, yeah. And now she's, you know, suing us. Well, she can't sue us because we have a COI. So it comes from the certificate of liability that the client had to pull to protect them and their guests um, and really to protect them. And ours is a million dollar policy for a basic and then we have different occurrences like 20,000 and 10,000 per occurrence after that mm -hmm. yeah I actually haven't heard of that but that sounds like a really smart idea to have like yeah I haven't seen any contracts with that clause but it makes a lot of sense so venues. do you have it yeah. like as do you have it as the venue so we have our own certificate of liability insurance that covers us as a venue. Our caterers also right. have to pull one, and we're the um, we're listed as the certificate holder from our catering company that comes on property. And then the client also pulls one where it's to benefit them, and we're the certificate. How much holder does that cost? That as well. um, between seventy-five to one hundred and fifty dollars. Oh, I've that's been, totally worth it. Yeah, yeah, and I've um, yeah. been pulling them probably for better part of ten years making and we they yeah. have, to have a liability yeah. venues highly recommend you yes. if you're not doing that for your clients yeah it makes yeah and i found that i 
I pull it because they'll take forever to pull it or they won't. Yeah. And that'll be the one time where I'm like, yeah. where's your, we don't have a COI and the vet can't start without it. So I've literally had people signing up for their COI, more nonprofit or corporate people showing up and being like, oh yeah, I forgot that. Um, okay. So go ahead and take out your phone. This is the website you're going to go to and we're going to sign up and you're going to email it to me right now before you come on property. So do you do that now more than ever now because of our last situation that occurred? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but I decided that I'm pulling it now and I also hire the security because security is there to protect the venue right. um, from the client's um, attendees, right? Because it's usually them that want to cause any issues um, at the end of the night. They've drank too much, whatever. I need my security guy to step in, especially if I'm trying to implement kind of like, hey, you can't climb over the fence where the donkeys are right um if i'm trying to implement something i need them to back me up but they're also very good about making sure that they protect everybody involved but i need them to work for me so now i do the insurance and i do the security and i include that in the contract that that's a separate invoice that comes across that's a great idea i for context i just heard about someone this weekend who booked her venue and she did it by paying the venue i think he yeah, Venmo them like four hundred dollars, and that was it. There's no contract. There's nothing. It's just she just Venmoed her, them, and so yeah, good for you. Four hundred says it all. If a venue, <laughs> if if you can secure a venue for four hundred dollars with no contract, no you contract that you ain't getting says that back. so much. But it also says how much. Like, what is this like, venue? What kind of venue? Where are you at? The services you're about to get are probably subpar. Just saying. <laughs> I mean, it's a casual. It's gonna be obviously it's gonna be a casual wedding, but like, yeah. is the wedding? There's still gonna, gonna be happen. people coming to their. <laughs> there's That's... no paper trail. <laughs> there's zero. Oh, there's God. no contract. There's you no can't paper prove trail. It. Yeah. So if if like nothing happens oh, and that, and that venue stops stops contacting or stops any uh, communication with you, the the client, I mean, I guess the only paper trail you have is Venmo. To somebody's email yeah and she's at, I mean, she said she has a few more emails with the vendor to verify you know to be like listen we had like an agreement that's in writing yeah. um yeah it, it's just like it's Protection. i am <laughs> you know i but the funny thing is i'm also shocked at how many wedding couples like when i tell people what i do engaged couples look at me and they're like huh or like married couples look at me and they're like yeah we didn't really read our contract we just send them yep. and i was like oh okay <laughs> i feel like most people <laughs> don't read them so i i've only had to have very strict con contracts because people make me right like the reason there are rules is because there's a name on every rule. There, that rule belongs to Joe. <laughs> that rule belongs to Karen. I love like, it. Like because I should name the rules after the person because that's the reason why I have so many and it becomes very strict. So I got to the point where I also have them initial after every single section of a rule. Like you have to initial it, and yeah, it's a pain in the butt. And there's like 20 times that you have to initial, but you signing at the bottom. At one point in my past contracts was not enough. I needed you to initial every single like bullet point, like bullet point one, two, three, every section had an initial. Well, as far as contracts are concerned, if like you have the contract and you, you sign at the very bottom, is that, is that sufficient or what, well, you know? Well, yeah, that, I mean, that is legally sufficient. <laughs> I was okay. overkill. <laughs> well, no, but I but mean, it does, overkill. Yeah. I, I think Brandy brings up a good point that it doesn't mean that they've read your contract. Um, and so what she does by requiring that they sign every single provision, that's, you know, it's a little tedious, but like it makes sure that they've read everything. So the <laughs> thing I try to tell people about a contract is a contract is both a legal document and a business document because it's a legal document because it outlines everyone's like legal obligations and responsibilities, but it's also a business document because you want to make sure that everyone, um, you want to make sure that your clients clearly understand at, like your business policies and your expectations. Yes, like what we allow and what we don't allow. Sometimes that gets muddy. It's like you. Oh. <laughs> we lost you for a second. Go ahead. Oh, I said um, I 
I don't know if you got any of that, but like I, my point was that like a contract is not just a legal document, it's also a business document. You want to be able to make sure your client understands all your business policies in order to prevent future conflict and dispute. So it's you have to think about it like that too. I, I find that people just think about it as a legal document and not enough as a business tool as well. Yeah. Yeah, I would say that um, a lot of the changes that I've ever had to make to a contract was because of our policies and people not reading our policies about what's allowed and they read it and they just missed they they were like oh i found a loophole or whatever it's like okay let me add in this this and this as well because it is our policies like for us we don't allow open flame we don't allow fireworks there's like certain like oh does that mean or we don't allow sparklers but does that mean i can bring fireworks like so we had to be specific no sparklers no fireworks no open flame exactly you know it, and it gets to the point where it's so in depth but you have to be because people will find oh but your contract says this but it doesn't say this they'll always be looking for that loophole yeah so i you know my suggestion is that like and this is how i structure the contract tracks in my online shop it's that like the first page is just the details of exactly what is happening like the event like the first title first one to four pages something like that just like the must know like this is the important details of what who is paying for what and like how what you're gonna what they're gonna get then there's um then there's a section there where it's like and also by signing this contract you agree to these terms and conditions and so essentially that terms and conditions goes to a like a website or a pdf document however you want to however you want to format it um and that includes all of these other details like all these other business policies such so that it's comprehensive but also doesn't interfere with like doesn't overwhelm the client um and yeah. you know get them to ask a lot of questions and stuff before they sign yeah and i think um contracts definitely mine does not say that by signing this you agree to the terms and conditions yeah i don't think I don't, mine does either is it, it is that, that. Is that something that you should definitely have on there? I guess would be a well, so the way I structure, I have like these are the additional terms and conditions you're agreeing to, and okay. so you you know by signing you do agree to all of these terms and conditions. But yeah, you should definitely have something that says something that says by signing this you agree to the above content or whatever the details. So are there are there certain. Uh, uh, prof like wedding professionals that you work with do you, I mean I assume you probably work with all and you know produce contracts for all types of wedding vendors are there specific ones that you work with more so than others you know I it seems that a lot of my clients are photographers and planners mm. okay very cool so. and you work with I mean so you're in California now correct yes and is it is it majority majority um you know vendors and wedding professionals in the California area or is it pretty much all over and how you know that that sort of thing it's pretty much all over it you know it's not as geographic as I think it is industry specific um because contracts are really about like how do these industries work what are these different processes um and so that is less uh, governed by law so much like a lot of the laws are kind of similar to the state um, but it's mostly like, I want to give you a good contract so that you can explain everything and think through everything so that you never have to get the legal system involved. So how do you build these contracts specific to each vendor? So like as an entertainment company, yeah, if I, if I were to reach out to you, I guess this, you know, how would you build that contract? I mean, I'm assuming you would probably ask like what questions, you know, what do we provide and that sort of thing. But like, what, how does that work? Yeah, I, you know, it's kind of a two part thing. Like I, we would get on the phone or I'd send you a questionnaire and we'd talk about like, you know, what what's important to you? What are different policies that you want to make sure to have based on your experiences? Like, you know, just like Brandy said, you you know, it's very important for them to have a um, the certificate of liability. Like that's super important, right? Like that's not necessarily something I see standard, but like if that's important to her, then that's something that we're including in the contract. Um, and so I try to think about it as like kind of like a cake and it's like, the cake is all of the stuff. Like I do a lot of industry research. Um, I listen to, a, I, I honestly Google and listen to a lot of podcasts about client horror stories, like or wedding vendor horror stories. Like, can you believe this happened? And then like update the contract with all of those things. Like, uh, and then, and then finally the icing on the cake is sort of like, what are the things that you want that's unique to your business? 
That's well, fun. We should start listening to horror All right, so, stories. well, no, there's <laughs> actually, if you go on Reddit, so I was, I was actually listening to another, like, wedding-style podcast. Yeah. Uh, and they actually just went on Reddit, and they just read uh, a bunch of these, like, horror stories on, on weddings. And then they gave, like, their feedback on, yeah. We should do that. We need to do that. We'll have to do, like, a, a review of, of Reddit <laughs> right. stories. Reddit stories, for but sure. But with that in, in mind, you know, do you have any, like, horror stories that you've been a part of or that you've seen, um, you know, can you even talk about can, them? Yeah, that, I guess, yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I haven't had any, I, you know, I'm, I am, like, pretty new to the wedding industry, and so I haven't, uh, I'm starting my practice in this area, but, so I haven't seen anything that is, I, that I personally encountered. Um, it's usually, you know, people usually come to me and they, they thought their contracts said one thing, then they had a client dispute, and then they realized that the contract wasn't clear or contradicted itself in separate places. Um, and that's usually what prompts people to come, come to me. Is that from people creating their own contracts? Yeah, I, almost every vendor I've worked with has seemingly DIY their contract, even if they've built like multi a business generating hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, so, yeah. So would you review contracts for industry professionals? Like if I sent you my contract, you have a plan, um, like a price point for reviewing my current contract? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, and then you make suggestions on that. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had to build contracts for the client when they're like, hey, my professional doesn't have a contract. Can you put a, together a contract for me <laughs> as the client? Uh, yeah, I haven't done that yet. I am curious if that will happen. Um, my sister and brother-in-law got married last year. And they said their DJ or someone didn't have a contract. Uh, their photographer didn't have a contract, so they wrote a contract for the photographer at the time. Um, so yeah, I haven't had that particular experience. Um, so I'm curious to see if it develops. Okay, well, couples, if any of your vendors don't have a contract, reach out to her and she will help you get that taken care of so that what? you're both good. Yeah, that's, I, again, like I'm just, I'm, it would baffle me that it baffles me that the venue somebody. that you were just talking about and the venue yeah. that uh, they don't have, they didn't have a contract. They just, uh, you here's said, my money. Yeah, here's $400 to, to secure the date, you think. But there's, mm. that's just, that's, I mean, is it, it, it's a restaurant where they're going to have it, but okay. at the same time, Still. I think that, like, so maybe it's not something you know, on really the, do. Yeah. Well, like, you know, on the one hand, like, People go in, they go to restaurants, and you know, some restaurants are expensive, and they may pay like four hundred dollars a meal or whatever. That's a good point. And they're not necessarily there's no contract there. Yeah. Um, you know, I think to me this indicates like all of it seems woefully underprepared. Um, just because I'm like four hundred dollars seems like too cheap to host a group of people if you're gonna have like uh, if you're gonna have any sort of service at all. Um, yeah. That's like and, maybe five and, and, people, five or ten at the most. Yeah, exactly. And and then at this, then I'm like, and that's why there's no contract because it's so. So they think it's like such a minimal fee. But then I'm kind of like, okay, it's it's all just confusing to me. <laughs> like, what do what does it cost if like what's a relative cost to like build a uh, a contract for a wedding professional? Um, or to have you review it and update it. Like what? Is, what? Like what are the typical costs for that? Yeah. So it really depends on what, how much I'm doing, uh, how extensive it is. Um, you know, like I said, I have contract templates in my store, and those are a couple hundred dollars. I think they're four hundred, five hundred, something like okay. that. Um, so like, that's where I, that's honestly where I recommend most people go. Like, if you're if you're starting out, like those are pretty comprehensive contracts. You can go in and update it, and with that's like plenty that should be enough like if you want to start there if you want to have like a more detailed contract or you have more specifics like for example what brandy was saying um i charge like fifteen hundred dollars to review a contract um and provide any kind of update so long as we're not like super extensive updates um and then if i'm drafting a custom contract that sort of like includes it's like basically all the bells and the whistles mm -hmm. um that's about thirty five hundred dollars okay. so it's, but it's well yeah. worth the investment. I was just going to say. I mean. It, yeah. For me to not like to get a booking to not happen or um, for a client to be able to say, oh, well, your contract doesn't say this. And that's my $3,500 for a half day rental gone. Yeah. 
definitely worth it. The other the other advantage of my contracts is I try to I write them so that they're friendly because I want like this is the last piece this is the last document your clients see before they pay you. Um so I'm like it should be friendly and I'm always Bye, astounded. Friend. We're so happy to have you with us. Oh We're just going to have you sign a few things. <laughs> you should hear, um, I have a disclaimer on one of my contracts. So not a, really just, it's a second page to my contract. And it literally talks about, um, let's see if I can pull up some of the details. Um, it literally talks about, let's see if I can get it to load, uh, page Three. So it's a disclaimer is meant to be lighthearted yet informative. Uh, we pride ourselves on making sure that everything's wonderful for your, for your event. However, there are certain things we truly cannot control. Some of these are the weather, bugs, and they're like bullet points and they list why. Bugs, we're in Florida. There may be spiders and mosquitoes and ants, um, unwanted visitors. Rarely we have snakes, but there might be small animals and critters. Uh, and they love your trash. Uh, finally, we cannot control your guests. We love being a family-friendly venue. Um, however, there are all kinds of fun places to explore. We ask that you can, you know, supervise your children. And then the one part is also, if you notice your guests or brand new spouse for that matter are getting intoxicated, please understand that it is your responsibility to ensure that they do not overindulge and that they get so they have a safe, sober dr a driver to transport them home. We encourage guests to leave their vehicles and they can be picked up if they've overindulged. So that's like our four bullet point that's like a fun disclaimer. You need to add a fifth. What's that one? Oh, we stop. cannot we not we cannot control our neighbors <laughs> shooting guns. <gasps> <laughs> did you read did you listen to the yeah. podcast? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. did. I did. No. Um Brandy, I'm really impressed. It's like super, you know, it's super detailed and comprehensive. Good for you. Okay. That's okay. okay. It's fine. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> my, but my, that's just one page. So my actual contract is that, that whole page. Three. They have to initial each one. <laughs> so my actual contract, <laughs> it has like all the, it has the client's name, the address, description of the event, the date and time. But what I also include is the start time and end time, because I want them to know what time they can get in and what time they can get out. Because if you just say you're booked for that date, there's no parameters and they want to show up at 5 a.m., that's a no-go. And if they think, oh, I can stay until midnight, nope, that's also a no-go. So we have that. And then we have the cost breakdown and what they get. And then we talk about liability, insurance, caters and vendors, waiver of claims, alcohol use, smoking, fire, flames, damage, cancellation, sound constraints, environmental concerns, compliance with laws, restrooms, security, parking, valet, COVID, still on there. Do you still have COVID on yours? Mm, no. I still have COVID on mine. Um, no, um, that we have no other agreements uh, well, for the use of the space while they have it. Well, what do you mean by COVID? So mine says it's responsibility of guests to ensure all CDC guidelines and recommendations oh, no. are followed for COVID-19, necessarily... including social distancing. Yeah, I mean, you're a venue, though, so you're the, I mean, I don't yeah, have anything on mine. Mine would just be, you know, if anything, I'm just summarizing. Like if the couple gets COVID. Well, no, I'm just saying if, if something were to happen, like, uh, like a COVID. Um, oh, force majeure. Yes. Yeah. Um, if something were to happen that, to where, you know, the wedding is not able to happen, mm -hmm. um, then, you know, we can reschedule. reschedule. That's what we have, too. We say in the event of a mandatory shutdown, yes. the words that we have to use now, issued by government entities or destruction of the venue due to act of God, um, we'll work with the client to reschedule mutually agree upon date. Um, and the retainer will remain non-refundable. But that's also why a lot of couples get cancellation insurance. Um, there's a venue group that I follow. So couples, if this is something that you, you know, you would feel better is especially if you're putting out a large amount of money, if something happens, Hey, I got pregnant. And now we're going to push the wedding off and none of your vendors are available or you have to hire new vendors. Cancellation insurance is very important because they're going to give you the money back of what you spent on your vendor. So you can rebook other vendors without going to that vendor and asking for the money back. Interesting. Yeah. It's only like. Three yeah, I actually, I haven't heard of cancellation insurance, but that's a great idea. Who provides the cancellation insurance? You can get it on the eventhelper.com. 
Say that again for the people in the back. TheEventHelper.com. <laughs> and that's where I also pull my insurance through. And that's um, that's that's cancellation, or I'm sorry. Cancellation insurance. For, and yep. that's what couples, for the should, couples should pull that. And yes. In the event that something crazy were to happen or. Yeah, like, hey, mom broke her hip and now she can't be in the wedding and I'm not getting married without my mom. Then, and everything needs to be pushed off. For instance, when um, Cheyenne got married, mm -hmm. right, in Amsterdam. Cheyenne is a planner locally. She planned her wedding in Amsterdam, but it got canceled twice. Once because of COVID, and then the second one was because of the requirements that they were asking all the guests to have, which is like all the vaccines. And some of her guests weren't comfortable doing all of that, which is understandable. Like, you get to choose, right? So she had to push it out a second time. However, she lost most, most of her vent of her vendors. And so she had to rebook new vendors. Had she had cancellation cancellation policy, which I don't know if she did or not, um, she would have been able to submit the claim, get money to re-secure new vendors, and not be out any money. What if uh, what if is, does the cancellation insurance? What if you just cancel the wedding altogether because like homeboy or homegirl were not faithful? <laughs> <laughs> don't know about that part. I think there's certain parameters. I think it's mostly like illness, death, um, what about you know, death car of the accidents, relationship? death of relationship <laughs> might not be one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I have to check on that one. Um, but I have had weddings cancel because of unfaithfulness. Oh, like yeah, the me day too. before. The day before. R what? Yeah. So the she day before. Mine, mine was a week before. Mine was like at rehearsal. I, when they showed up for rehearsal to check into the on-site accommodations, they let us know there would be no wedding the next day and that the party would still go on, but it would be at the accommodation house that we had on property because the groom also had another fiance and he chose to go ahead and continue that relationship. Whoa, hold on. All right, so out of all the crazy stories that we've talked about, <laughs> this is now just coming up? No, I've talked about this you before. You have not. And she had hair down to her butt. She went out that night, cut her hair, got a tattoo, and they threw a huge party um, on the actual day of the wedding Hold with on. just all her friends and Hold family. Hold on. You just said that he had two fiancés. Yes. And he chose – how? Is this <laughs> is this know. The Bachelor? I, I've never, like what? I've never like he had two – do you have two weddings booked? He was yes. – Like that sounds expensive. I that's know, just, but his, excuse her my language. That's completely it. fucked up. It is, <laughs> and he should probably die a horrible death. But oh, anyway, well, chill on that. I mean, maybe he not. should. He karma should, should definitely. Karma, karma, do what you do. But what I'm, <laughs> but I think her family paid for the wedding because that's who I'd been working with. So her family had been. Where was saved. this? Was that Mixon's? Uh, why did I have a feeling it was at Mixon's? <laughs> <laughs> when so when was this? Was I the DJ? Oh, no. oh, probably not. No, they ended up um, having just the wedding at the farmhouse. And the when party, because there was yeah, no wedding. Yeah, the, the party. And um, it was just her family and friends. But I think her family paid for all of it, so he wasn't out any money. Duh. But, like, like how did how did she find out the day before? Like, what happened? I think he had to confess. Well, duh, he because didn't show up. Because it was the up. day before the wedding, so he had to confess. Yeah, he had to come I'm clean. I'm so confused. The dude was in engaged to yes, two different he had people. Two relationships going on. Yes. And the other lady continued to want to be with him. I don't know that part, but I guess. I mean, I can find out more details because yes, I know please. the sister of the, of the, <laughs> what the You've I know the sister. I could just say, hey. Let me, I have a question. Yeah. What ended up happening Can we bring the guy? sister on? Let's just have a whole <laughs> podcast about this story. This is so funny. We should bring her so, on too, but no. I'm yeah, so this is why I don't do family law because I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> give me a business contract all day, every day. Like I can, yeah. this kind of stuff, it makes my head hurt. So yeah, what's like, not mean you but, shouldn't like, get married or engaged, like still, you know, we still believe in love and all the things. This is like a one-time thing, but get your cancellation insurance for all the other reasons. Well, I think the point is that, like, we think that, like, nothing could, nothing's going to go wrong, right? right? Like, that's what we all believe. But, like, actually the chance of something going wrong is not negligible. Like, any one specific thing happening, yeah, that's, like, could be a rare occurrence. But, like, the fact that something could go wrong, that's, I don't know. I feel like it's, yeah. Yeah, so I also had another wedding where the groomsman brother passed away the day before the wedding. Okay, now that's Oh, God, that's that sounds sad. horrific. It was very sad. He, pa he had overindulged and he passed out in a hot tub at Ooh, the hotel all right, so and they still had the wedding the next day so if they had had con cancellation insurance they would have been able to just reschedule was everything. that mixed as well yeah it was very sad 
Wow. Oh, but no. honestly, they did a damn good job of honoring him at the wedding. Like, they did all the things that they knew he would have wanted them to do. So, yeah. And they just had their second baby. And I follow them on all my socials. Like, they're friends of mine. So, yay. Yeah. So, you know, anything can, like you said, anything can derail the plans, right? Like, you right. Know, the hotel could get shut down. We've had that happen right before a hurricane at where I'm at now in my nonprofit uh, venue. They had our trainers arrive on site to do a uh, nonprofit um, retreat day of training on compassion fatigue. They spent thousands of thousands of dollars. They had all their staff come in from all different parts. And literally the county came in because the hurricane was coming in a couple days. They came in and shut down the whole entire hotel. Literally people were carrying out their food in, in like to-go boxes because they had just been served lunch. And they told them, you've got five minutes to get out of here. And what do you do in that case? Like they lost all that money. So they had to reschedule and it hit, you know, for nonprofit that hits the bottom line very significantly. So I think cancellation insurance is just way undervalued. Yeah, definitely. You heard it here first folks. <laughs> I've never heard of cancellation insurance. So yeah. And we've been doing this podcast for almost two years. <laughs> and yeah. I've, that's the first time I heard that story. <laughs> about I got, I got 20 buddy. years of stories well true i've got 10 but i don't have any I, for some reason any of my crazy stories i don't just remember i don't remember them but then again my memory oh. sucks <laughs> um well my, they only come up in certain instances uh, i mean i could i can go on for quite a few stories we're gonna have a whole podcast of all my stories. on just crazy on and crazy stories just crazy stories from weddings yeah. and we need to write them down we just need to start writing them down and then we do. have people like also send us their crazy wedding stories yeah. what um and what other like what other special or um uh words i words are just aren't coming out um and i don't know what words you're trying i'm trying to fill you in um what other contracts or situations or industry within um, yeah within the legal industry like what what other specialties do you focus on there we go Oh, a couple other things that I focus on. I work with uh, a lot of designers, like web designers, interior designers. Um, I work with e-commerce folks who are dealing with issues, especially with Stripe. Um, oh, and there's a lot I'll, going on with Stripe right now. When yeah. You know, spam, like our whole entire account, we can't process credit cards for our, our nonprofit because we keep getting spammed and everything keeps getting hacked and through all of our credit card processing on Stripe. Maybe you can help. Yeah. Us. Yeah. I, that's actually, I do a lot of that. So uh, I'm sorry to hear that though, but it is, yeah, it's becoming more and more common. So um, yeah, those are the other industries that I sort of focus on. Okay. Awesome. awesome. So not, not family law, not <laughs> personal injury, none of that. Just majority is like contracts. That's, that's. It's, it's business law. So I focus business a lot law. on business oh, okay. losses. Part of it is part of his contracts. The other part of it is like, um, Copyright, trademarks, those kind of things, uh, cool. like trademarking your business name. Um, so, we, and we that's know somebody. Important. We know somebody who just went through that whole process. Really? Yeah. Who? Fly. Oh, oh yeah, trademarking and everything because they franchised. Yeah. So they needed to trademark and do all of that stuff. So, um, would you say that all industries professionals should be trademarked? Like everything should be on the up and up and all that good stuff because I had an instance at my venue a couple venues ago where um, literally the design of our packets of inclusive packages and everything that we did, another venue copied literally placement of word verbiage by verbiage and all they did was change like same font everything and all they did was change like some of the background images and a little bit of the pricing and they were duping it off as their own and we had to contact them and say you literally took our whole entire pricing package so in that instance how do you keep somebody from like taking your you know because it was my literally my creative baby like i birthed it from my own brain so it was like my baby and then somebody else wants to say oh we're just gonna take this and do it are we gonna call these people who is it i'm not gonna say <laughs> i want to know I'll tell you offline. Anyway, um, <laughs> winery. So the other thing oh. is, is that, so how do you protect your creative, <laughs> like, packages, right? 
Yeah, I mean, so those are the kind of things that, like, I wish I could say that there's something you could do to prevent it from happening, but there isn't. There's no way for me for you to lock down all your assets and, like, do all these things. The the result, like, if you, if you trademark it, it's easier to go after them and be like, hey, by the way, like, this is a trademarked asset, so if you're going to use it, we're going to sue you for, like, X amount. Like, that's, like, a much more... The, it gives you a stronger protection than or a stronger remedy than if you're like if you didn't trademark it and you're like hey that's mine then you copied it um that if you do that then like yeah they might change it and they might you know you can threaten legal action and they might change it because you threaten legal action um but if you haven't taken those steps to protect those assets in terms of intellectual property then you you don't have that much room to pursue them until you do so, but like logos and things like that, you should trademark. Or yeah, I think you should. You should sort. You should trademark like anything that you is. I tell people to trademark things like business assets that they know that they're going to stick with. Because sometimes, like businesses, like they try different things and they're like, "Yeah, you know what? I'm not going to do this package or this project or whatever." Um, and so then they get rid of it, which I'm like, okay, you don't need to trademark it immediately. But like, if it's something that you know that you're definitely going to stick with, like, for example, your venue name or your logo, like, it's probably something you're going to stick with at that point, and yeah. at, then you should trademark it. Okay. Are you trademarked? No. Oh, you should. Maybe. I mean, I don't... How much does that run? <laughs> <laughs> it, so like, it's, I, it's like... <laughs> Yeah, it's usually fifteen hundred um, for me to trademark a brand asset, um, but you, and it takes about a year to get your back from the USPTO and things like that. Oh, the wow. thing about wow. the thing about that trademark though is that like if you don't do it, and and like I say this from experience, this actually happened to me. If you don't trademark something, and then someone else comes up with like someone else uses the same name or whatever, they can force you to change your name, or they can basically if say they're like trademarked, or if they're not trademarked. Like, if they're trademarked and you're not trademarked. Oh. So I yeah. could literally steal, like, I don't know, Skittles if it wasn't trademarked and then make them change their name. Yeah, that's what happened. Yeah, well, so that happened. Twitter. Uh, like, for a, like a, I feel like it was like a soda company or something. Like, oh. What? Yeah, it's also happening for X. X, like, renamed themselves and then their Twitter renamed themselves X. And then a lot of, like, companies were like, actually, we've already trademarked that. And so you have to pay us. <laughs> figure out yeah. what we can buy to I, trademark to get paid like if somebody else didn't trademark it we yeah, should trademark look it for the national companies money. that aren't trademarked but most most of them probably are but there was a soda company I i'm mean, pretty X sure didn't what? that dude's worth billions and billions of dollars he's like yeah oh, okay, i'm a million dollars whatever shut up yeah exactly I, i'm pretty sure that's million. what he thought right but <laughs> I think for me, like for TLS Entertainment, I don't think anybody's going to come out here and be like, oh, no, I'm TLS Entertainment. Well, I like the hashtag that you use, say yes to TLS, and it really fits my venue, too, at the same time. Say yes to TRS. I know. So, so here's <laughs> a tip. So the, the, can, Tim, the issue would be if somebody has something, they have a similar brand in entertainment or events, and they're like, Actually, you can't use that beyond Florida. Like, I don't know if you can do anything out of state, but like, they're like, actually, this we trademark this nationally, and it's confusing to our brand. Your name is yeah. confusing to our brand, so you cannot market yourself nationally. Correct. So it doesn't even have to be exactly the same. It doesn't have to be TLS Entertainment. It could be something that's like TLS and be like, I, yeah, you know, that could there is a conceivably. TLS weight loss. That's I. I don't know if it's still a thing now, but yeah, there's like a TLS. I only know it because somebody who I who I dated years and years and years and years ago uh, was part of TLS, um, this weight loss solutions TLS, oh. yeah, something like that. What if it was like his tagline, "Say yes to the dress, say yes to TLS"? Is that something that could be chill, dog? I'm just saying, I'm <laughs> trying to protect you. He's like, stop putting it out there, damn. Let's hear but, it. But yeah, I mean, it's it's everything illegal is about measuring risk like how big is this risk um and so maybe maybe that would be a big risk or but maybe it isn't that's like not something you want to uh, mess with TLC, but see the entertainment company oh my like, god where are the tv where they're they, like where's too they close to the dress i do is. you know what i do say i do hear a lot of people saying like oh this is tlc uh entertainment i'm like no Wait, it's not tlc the music group and tlc the tv show Oh yeah. I wonder how. 
Oh. Hmm. I don't know. It's a thing. Yeah, it is a thing. I wonder how that I wonder how that played out. You're right. I never thought about that. Hmm. I don't know. I'm not going to ask them. <laughs> Let me stir nope. something up. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome that you can provide but, all of those services. Go ahead. Oh, but what I'm saying, it has to like be something that in the, is in the same industry and would cause brand confusion. That's the whole point of trademarks. It's to prevent people from getting confused about what the about thinking that both of those brands are related or in confusing the services. So there's like a conceivable argument to be like say, TLC is different from TLC the show, and I bet they have like yeah. So maybe that's maybe that's why that wasn't a problem, or maybe there was some sort of licensing agreement to be like, hey, we can use this name too, um, even though you have a trademark. I don't know. Could you could there could do you think there's like a confusion between say yes to the uh, say yes to the dress and say yes to TLS. Is that, and we're both kind of in the I, wedding industry, but I think you would have to be like a risk as far as like taking money from their pocket. Like if they see, like, if you're, like she said, in the same industry and you start dipping into their, you know, if you started a dress company and you're like, yep, say yes to TLS. Okay. I see that. Yeah. Then, and you start dipping into their profits. That's where they care. That's where they're like, oh no, that's our money. Uh -uh. No, that, that I think it's all about the bottom dollar. And when they start to see that something's taking away from that, that's when I think trouble starts. Yeah, say. some sort of competitor, just like what Brandy was saying about the other venues stealing her pricing package and guidelines. Like, hey, you know, that real? was like. Take that as like a, a, I a compliment. I did at the same time, but. Like, they weren't stealing anything from you. baby. Come up yeah. with your own stuff. I mean, you, why reinvent the wheel if it's already out there? I know. What? Don't break what ain't, you know, don't fix what ain't broken. But it wasn't the integrity part of it, I think, because we're in the same industry. Like, if you were, like, we're both venues, right? Like, if you were. So call them out. I know. <clears throat> <laughs> I already did. I know. Um, so if we were like in the in the same industry, then it probably wouldn't have bothered me as much. Like say it was like a wedding planner and it looked a little different and it had different packaging and pricing. No, this literally like where the placement was of the text was in the same location on my paper. <laughs> like like coffee right. to a tea. That was just And then what happened? Did they um, change it? Emailed them and then they ended up changing it, but not that much. But here's the thing. You can take that piece of paper and try to duplicate what I had built. You can't do that if you don't have the same people that we had on the team. Well, true. Right. Exactly. So at the end of the day, you it, can try. But it was the integrity part of it. Like, we have a certain respect level in the industry for other vendors and other people. That it's just like a – it's a – line in the sand you just you know it's a it's a boundary you just don't cross right it's a respect level and if you can't get like gain on your own creativity and your own uh, you know your own brain power and whatever then hire somebody that can pull that out for you but if it's not like your experience like you know what i mean like if it's not like your strong suit then find somebody that can be that person for you don't just take somebody else's stuff because you're like oh well that looks easy but they have n they had no clue the inner workings that went into all the packages and stuff that we had to offer. They were just like, "Hey, that looks cool. Let's do that." Well, yeah, they yeah. So, got. I mean, it takes us back to our days where we used to burn music and steal music all the time, right? <laughs> True. <laughs> True. We've that. all done it. We've all done it. And how uh, how can people find you? How can they reach out to you? What does that look like? Yeah, definitely. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at Powerhouse Legal, where I share legal and business tips, especially uh, tips about client acquisition and closing sales. Um, you can also go to my website at powerhouse-legal.com forward slash uh, legal forward slash resources. There's a wedding contract guide for wedding professionals about like three tips on how to help your con help help optimize your contract so the clients are more likely to book. Um, and then you can grab a contract template from the from my online store called the businessreserve.com. The and I think I'll send you all these details so you can add it to the show notes. Okay, perfect. Perfect. Nope. So industry peeps, keep yourself protected. Yes. Have proper con have a contract. That's step one. Yeah, have a contract. Have yeah, a contract. It's just like <laughs> yeah. hey, like we are on in contract. Yeah. Something like you have booked it me like something. Um because I mean it's all 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 is fair, right? When you like we got autographs this weekend at the um Marauders baseball game and I have Clemente's son's autographs. But it's not worth anything unless like 
maybe there's a T, you know what I mean? Like it just has to have value. So everything has to have a signature. It doesn't have the value. So have a contract yeah. to uh, brush up your contracts yearly. Well, you would say yearly or every, like, is that about how often you should read through them to make sure they make sense or more often? Yeah, it got at least yearly. Ideally, I think twice a year. Um, but like essentially like every time you have like a terrible client experience, like something that a client asks you about because it's not clear or a client's like giving you a lot of hassle about something like whenever there's or like you're like, huh, I need to add that to my contract because I don't want that to ever happen again. Yeah. Like Brandy said, like every every rule has a name next to it. There's a reason like yeah. that's what you should be doing. Update your contract every time you have an experience that you're like, yeah, don't want to repeat that. Yeah. And then I also have contracts with my vendors. So when I do a um, vendor list. Wow, you're really a, prepared. I have a vendor agreement that has been, you know, gone through that's legally binding that I have with my vendors to ensure that what they're providing my clients that I'm referring them to is on the up and up and what should be happening and that it's to, uh, you know, to the standard of what we expect as a venue. So um, so have a contract. I've never gotten a contract from you. Yes, you have for that, the pink list. You that mixing one. is not a retreat. Well, that's because the list ain't ready yet. Like the contract is still being QC'd. Okay. All right. I should send it to Anna because <laughs> I probably would have it back by now. But, um, so have a contract. Make sure it's clear and concise. Revisit it um, at least two times a year. Um, every rule has a name, so put it in there. And uh, make sure you get those signatures. That's and right. Describe what it is yeah. you're getting and name it a retainer or a res I'm sorry, a reservation fee instead. Of yeah, that. the other you know, the other thing is like call it an agreement. Don't call it a contract. An agreement is oh, yeah. more it is a like friendlier a term. So when you're start when you're doing this, call it an agreement. Yeah, no, that's exactly what you should do. Wow, Brandy, you're really on top of it. Mine says contract. I should be an attorney. I was always told that too, and I don't think it was a compliment either. What is yours? <laughs> Although my middle son wants to be an attorney now. He likes to argue, and I don't know where he got it from. Hmm. I wonder. I <laughs> but, yeah, you. it's like these are <laughs> – Exactly. Crazy exactly. <laughs> oh, boy. I, the thing is I see a lot of DIY contracts in this industry. It's a lot to do on your own. I almost always see DIY contracts missing some critical provisions. I do not recommend DIYing, even if it seems simple enough. Like, grab a contract template if that's – if nothing else, grab a contract template from me or someone else. Like yeah. DIYing is rough because you don't know what you're missing. How long are your DIY con or your your I'm sorry your contracts the templates? So the contract itself is like one to four pages, and then the rest of it is sort of the terms and conditions, which are more comprehensive. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I think when I so that's like that's several pages. Yeah. I think when I first started wedding planning, it was like two pages. Yeah. 20 years ago. But I had one. I, I copied it from something online and I would yeah. fill it in. It was a Word doc and I would fill it in and they would have to, I'd print it out and then they'd sign it and then I'd make a copy and then I'd give them a copy. Like it was all this, you know, 20 years ago. Wow, you're from Digital. the dinosaur yeah. ages. I am. <laughs> I am. Paper. You know, that's a thing. Oh. So, but I remember my contract being like one to two pages max. But it got more lengthy when more things happened. Like, I put a clause in there that I don't <laughs> tie bows and I don't do tool. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, but it's also just a really good reminder for you to talk about all these things with your clients to be like, because you don't, they're, this is their first time doing this, hopefully, um, ideally. Yeah. And it, you, you, on the other hand, you do this day in and day out. So you inherently know a lot more about this. So it's good to like educate your clients going forward to be like, hey, these are some things you should be aware of. Um, and that's why I'd like to, you know, that's why they're hiring all these service professionals because they don't know how to do this. They don't know how to plan a wedding. They don't know how to be a DJ. They don't know how to like cook all this food. So this is just another part of being like, let me guide you through this process and be, give you the rundowns in just in case you think any of these things. I just want to be super clear about what you, what I will do and what you will do, because I'm sure a lot of people are like, yeah, the wedding planner does everything, everything. So like they don't, they, I'm sure they don't understand. No, and I used to have my clients send me contracts before they signed them because I wanted to read them. Wait, say that again? When I was a wedding planner, 
I would read contracts for my clients before they signed them for other vendors. Oh, for, for the other, other vendors. vendors. Yeah. 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 We would we would not sign a contract. Like, w- nope, we don't sign contracts until the planner looks at the contract. Well, that's, that's smart. Well, because I knew that's like, nice what my of you. role was, and I knew what they should be doing, and I f- knew if there was anything left out, it was going to come back to me to do, and that wasn't probably anything that I would be charging enough money to do if they left it out. And I didn't want to be surprised at the end of the day because anytime I meet a new client, I'm like, okay, have you signed any contracts? If I was their planner, have you signed any contracts? Please send them over to me um, before I give you pricing because I want to know like what everybody else is doing in relationship to what they're providing versus, you know, me being surprised and thinking, oh, I'm setting up the ceremony chairs. I thought the venue was setting up the ceremony chairs. So just having all that clear cut responsibility is important. Amen. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great idea. All right, okay. Anne. Well, thank you so much for joining us uh, this afternoon. Um, we appreciate you calling in all the way from California. That's where you're looking at, right? first virtual. Yeah, first virtual. Yeah. that has been awesome. Um, yeah, thank you so much. A- anything else that you want to end on before we before – we Yeah, leave? I have one comment, which is everything that I told you is legal information, but it doesn't make me your attorney. Um, it's True. just sharing legal tips with you, but I, this does not create an attorney-client privilege uh, relationship. So, just FYI, but to your, <laughs> to you all and your audience. Yes, because you wouldn't be a good attorney if you didn't say it. That's right. We'll uh, we'll make sure to put all of your information um, on the show notes of the podcast on uh, YouTube. You can find us on YouTube. Uh, just go to TLS Entertainment and or just put in the scoop. Um, the weddings unveiled. Yep. Uh, we are on all. Podcasts of Spotify, Apple Music, where iHeart, wherever you listen to your podcast, that's where we're, that's where we are. Uh, you can see Brandy on the on the socials at uh, Brandy B Harlan is my personal, and then the venue is the Retreat Sarasota on Facebook and Insta. Okay, and then myself, SRQ Tim, on Instagram, um, and then TLS Entertainment for both um, Instagram and Facebook. Yeah. So go check awesome. out our podcast page too. Oh yeah, um, on IG. Yeah, the Scoop, the Scoop Weddings, Weddings Unveiled. Unveiled. We uh, we post we'll have some hilarious uh, things to check out. Snippets of things. Awesome. Well, again, Anne, thank you so much for joining us today. That's gonna do it for us. Again, this is the Scoop Weddings Unveiled. I am Tim Schaus, your premier DJ with TLS Entertainment, alongside the wonderful, beautiful, non-retired wedding planner Brandy Harlan. Peace and chicken grease. Holla. Bye.